Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yasa Allah, Koholoyim La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekha Kudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwap that's out here sincerely, keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Shachanan the Wap, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And also, what I said in the greeting is, um, Koholoyim La. All praises to Yahweh, which the world they call him the most high, God, Jehovah, and all these different names. But his name is Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one in Paleo Hebrew. Bahashem in the name of his son, which the world only calls Jesus, his name is Yahweh Shai, which means that he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo Hebrew. And the Rakakodash, that's the Holy Spirit. And um, you know, we like to bring that out. So our people will know you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, you are the true Hebrew Israelites. You have to know the true name of our father, our power and come back and repent because that's our original nationality. We're not these names that um, our enslavers gave us. See, they don't want you to know who you are. But, you know, all the evidence is coming out. The evidence is there that we are the children of um, Israel, you know. So but let's get off into some of this story. It says, um, Arby's manager found dead in freezer, couldn't escape due to broken door lawsuit claims. Okay. Now, when I seen this and I'm like, you know, I see these stories and when you see the type of judgment that the Lord can hand down to a person, it, you know, it may, a, you think that, you know, a lot more people would fear them and, and repent. You know, you don't want to wait till it's too late. You know, you don't want to wait on that door of grace or door of mercy to close, man. You know, you don't want to, you know... <laughs> I mean, all of us have a lot here. We're all playing a part in this movie. But, you know, we're praying to you how about Shema was shout on a day-to-day -day basis for protection and safety. It's important to know those names, like I said, so that way you can pray to the Father to keep you safe throughout the day, man, because it's a lot of crazy shit going on out here. Okay, so um, it says, an, Ar an Arby's manager beat her hands bloody at attempting to escape a wall-in freezer she was found dead in earlier this month according to a lawsuit filed in the Texas against the fast food chain and franchise owner. Well, if she was the manager, she had to have known that door was broken. Well, anyway, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but she was 63 years old. After police said her body was found in the icebox of an Arby's in New Iberia, Louisiana, about 21 miles south of Lafayette, okay? It says the wrongful death suit filed by her four children who live in Texas seeks more than a million dollars in damages. Shit, seeming like they would get a lot more than that out of that. The eight-page suit alleges both show gross negligence by failing to fix a broken freezer door. The suit filed Friday claims the victim had been temporarily assigned to work at the Louisiana store before she was found dead. See? And she that was temporarily she wasn't even, that's, I'm assuming this wasn't even her original workplace. So the Lord set it up where she'll be there that particular day to, to judge her, basically, man. It says, at the time of her death, the suit continues. The store's freezer door had been broken since August 2022, and employees used a screwdriver to help open and close the door and used a box of oil to keep the freezer door open. Yeah, that's all. I mean, they, you think they'd be suing for a lot more than that million. According to the lawsuit, she became trapped in the freezer and beat her hands bloody trying to escape, according to an autopsy. She died of um, hypothermia. OK, at the time of her death, uh, Lee was a general manager at the store and her oldest son. Who also worked at the store, found his mother dead in the freezer. The lawsuit continues. That's crazy, bro. The plaintiffs, um, according to the suit, are also seeking ju a jury trial. We are aware of the tragic incident that took place at our franchise location, and RB spokesperson told USA Today Wednesday. The franchise is cooperating fully with the local authorities as they conduct their investigation. Due to this being an active investigation, we defer any further comments. Okay, so it's not saying if she was the... If she was the general manager, let me see. It says at the time of her death, Lee was the general manager at the store. And her, see, hold on. So if she was the general manager, she would have been in charge of getting shit like that done. 
getting stuff like that fixed. But of course, okay, they saying this, you know, that this wasn't her, you know, she was there temporarily. So maybe who knows, you know, but still you think that, you know, her being there for whatever amount of time, hell, even the first day, you should have been saying, hey, dude, this is a safety um, violation right here, man. We need to get this shit fixed. Let's get somebody out here. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of these restaurants, man, they so goddamn cheap. And they don't want to blow no money on budgets and stuff like that. Because a lot of those managers, you know, they kind of get budget checks and stuff. Or they get bonuses to lock you. But anyway, hey, let's go into some scriptures, man. Just like I said, every time I see a story like this, it just kind of blows my mind, man, as to how the Lord can get you, man. First off, let's get this Hebrew. Salaki so like Hebrews. Uh, 10 and 31 real quick. Yeah, that's a way to go out there, buddy. Ooh it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And you know she had to have been fearful. I'm surprised she didn't die from like basically a heart attack just from being afraid. Just, just the fear, you know, because the scripture talks about the Lord being a, a terrible power, man. Matter of fact, let's see. Uh, so you get this um, white Christianity gives you this mindset that the Lord is this nice guy, you know, and that he loves everything and he loves everybody. This is um, Psalm 66 and 5. Come and see the works of Yahweh. He is terrible in his doing towards the children of men. See that? Hey, man, the Lord is not playing no games. That's why it's so important to repent, man. It's been a, it was a horrible Memorial weekend. There's a lot of people caught the business this um, Memorial um, Day weekend, man. And all these holidays are wicked as hell. A lot of people, um, um, you know, die on, on these holidays. They're supposed to be joyous times. They're supposed to be days of celebration, you know, and all this other shit. But. The, the 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 spike in deaths go up so high on all these these <laughs> these damn holidays, man. It's just out of control. Christmas supposed to be your most joyful time of the year. You love him, sweet white baby Jesus. People getting robbed, getting killed, getting stuck up, getting carjacked, getting you know stuck up at the damn ATM machine, getting a bag snatched from them. Right? Yeah, I mean it's just come on, man. This every single one of these holidays. Watch Fourth of July roll around and watch what a treacherous weekend that'll be, or whenever day it lands on. You know, this is um Deuteronomy 32 and 39. And these are those scriptures that you never hear in the Christian church, man. I never heard none of these scriptures come out. Deuteronomy 32 and 39, it says, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That's cold, man. No one can deliver you out of the hands of the Lord, man, if the Lord wants you out of here. For real. That's why it's so important to have that healthy fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. We're praying for mercy. We need to be praying for mercy on a day-to-day -day basis, man. Isaiah um, 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? These scriptures should be coming out on a regular basis in these Christian churches, but they're not telling you that none of this stuff. They're just telling you that Jesus loves you. He loves you. He knows that you come as you are. You can do whatever you want to do. You're already saved by grace, which is a complete damn lie. Okay, let's get one more. Um, Amos 3 and 6. It says, Shall a, a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? See that? That's the Lord, man, that set that all up. You know the type of timing? I, I, when I think about it, it's just the timing, man, of how the Lord gets down. It's like... You know how many things that's got to play out and go in the real perfect um, positioning for her to have to have gone through what she had went through. That's that's hey, if you see those Final Destination movies, <laughs> hey, that, that, those are cold movies, man, because it, it, the timing, you know, when they show like how people was getting the business, it was it was a perfect setup. And that's the Lord, man. The Lord is in control of all things, man. Matter of fact, uh. Let's get this one, because the Lord is in control of who lives and who dies. We just got it in Deuteronomy. Let's 
Matthew 10 and 29, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. See? So the Lord, he's in control of, of every damn ant that's been stepped on or roach or whatever. You know? When a lion runs down a gazelle or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the Lord is in control of, of, of every single thing that's, that's going on around you, man. You know? And that's a beautiful thing to know. That's why we can't, you know, you, there's no room for pride. You can't be prideful. You're just clay. You just the way, you know, you just the way that the Lord made you. You see what I'm saying? Matter of fact, it's a, uh, let me see, where is that? Uh, I could have went to the other one. Mm. In, uh, I think it's Book of Ecclesiastes, I want to say. Let's see. 33 and... Verse 13, Ecclesiastes 33 and 13, also known as the book of Sirach. It says, as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so so man is in the hand of him. Salakia. So man, let's see where it's at. Let me start that back. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liketh them best. See? So the, the Lord, he created everything the way that he wanted it to be. Nothing can go no further than he wants it to go. That's like when you, you know, that the scripture talks about the um, the seas or the ocean. Basically, they got that boundary with the sand. When you think about how vast the oceans are, why don't they go past where they are? You think that they will overflow any city and just keep on flowing just throughout the whole entire globe. As powerful as those waves be coming in and splashing. But the Lord gave a boundary for it. You see what I'm saying? Now, also, let's go here, since we already in here. Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. It says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they power off their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is and when their time has come they shall not transgress his word see you think that the, the, these christian pastors will be teaching this type of stuff like hey the lord created spirit, spirits for vengeance man to get at you you get out of hand you know they're not teaching this stuff in the, in, in the Christian churches, man. They're, t they're literally telling you that the Lord loves you and he loves everything about you. And you can do what you want to do. You're saved by grace. But the scripture says that those that endure to the end shall be saved. And none of us are at the end. And that's just some happy, happy go shit, man, where they just trying to get your money anyway. Because, see, that, that's, a, that's the beauty of Christianity to a lot of these Christians. They, they don't have to have no accountability. They can just live how they want to live, but still I'm saved. See, that don't, you know, that, that don't go hand in hand. You know, that faith without works is dead. I just wanted to just touch on this for a hot sec, man. Um, I just found it. Hey, this is a, one of the one of the most creative deaths I've seen in quite some time. I mean, because like I said, I do these these lessons on this particular topic all the time pretty <laughs> i'm doing at least once one or tw two a week and the brothers be going in on it too you know they'll call it in the news or stuff like that but man this is a horrible way to go she beat her hands bloody man this is a horrible horrible way to go man that's a horrible way to go i can't even imagine that ah and you know like i said again she's 63 working at a fast food restaurant man as a general manager she's probably there man from her teens, man. Finally made it to that position. But like I said, as a general manager, and there's a scripture that talks about um it's that one scripture with uh I think how it was worded. Let me see, I might be able to find it. There's Proverbs twenty four. Four. Let's go into it. And Thirty-one reminds me of this one. 
Let me start at verse 30. Proverbs 24 and 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of a man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. <laughs> so King Solomon, man, he said, hey, you know, he learned something from that situation just by seeing it. He says, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. But the point that I wanted to make was, you know what I'm saying? Just the not handling the business of handling that, that door lock, man, on the freezer. It's like I said, if she's a general manager, the first day she came there, she should have been like, hey, this shit needs to be fixed. Let me get on, you know, let me, you know, get a locksmith, whatever, whatever, or let me call around and try and see, because that's their job, man. As a general manager, you're supposed to be on top of stuff like that. You're you're over the, the, the maintenance and the, the look good of the store, so to speak, you know? But a lot of these, you know, restaurants and stuff like that, man, a lot of these, a lot of businesses don't handle business, man, like that, really, because they're so goddamn cheap, man. You know, they don't want to spend no extra dollars on nothing, man. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. Hey, I pray that this lesson was edifying to whoever's listening. Um, you know, repent to the father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh shot, because you never know when you're going to be out of here, you know, and 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 pray for mercy that is never in a, a violent way. You know, I prefer to just go in my sleep, man, or. You know, or at least, you know, <laughs> if I'm going to go, I don't want to be in no violent nothing, man. I don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, in part of what the, you know, those spirits of vengeance can bring, man. I don't want to be in a house fire, a car fire or, a, you know, some damn animal attacking me or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you yeah, uh, 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 you know, just a, a vicious beating on the street. You know, there's just so many ways to go, man. We see it all the time. Look at the news at night. The news is full of stories. You'd be wondering, like, well, how the fuck, you know? Now, I know how it goes down because of these scriptures, because, you know, it's true. But before, I, I you know, you just be like, damn, that's messed up. You know, what a terrible accident. <laughs> you know, but now we know who's getting down. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Form your shalom.